This is how I live, I live. This is what I love uh, This is all the things that my dreams have been made of Welcome to my life This is what I love This is what the soundtrack to my life is made of Music love life Crystal Jordan, be honest with myself, Mr. Kevin. We are Music Love Life. Tomorrow, Welcome. I mean, the next time we do this, I want you to say Mr. Mr. Be Honest and Mr. No, I don't want to be Mr. Why? Be Honest. Didn't, I want to be, I want that's the same weird. respect. No? I don't want to be Mr. Be Honest. That's weird. <laughs> no, you, well, you're not. Be it honest, does sound weird. Be Honest is already a, a, a moniker. And it's already a rebellion against everything that's... What do you mean? I'm very honest. Yeah, but you're honest in the face of... There's a, there's a great African fable that says, the man who tells the truth has no friends. Oh, yes. That's why I'm so lonely. <laughs> mm. That's why I'm so lonely. <laughs> and why do y'all make a big deal out of the mystery anyway? It's just pervy, it's, like weird, like the guy that sits on a park bench and just watches little young girls go by. <laughs> Something like that. It's just mister. I know, but it's it, still it, something... It ain't mister. It ain't like... Mr. Like well, that, color purple, Mr. No, it's not. It's just Mr. Like I don't think that's worse. I think that may be a lateral move. <laughs> I think Mr. Mr. is a lateral move. One is not better than the other. I don't know how you came upon it. I like what can you give us the the, <laughs> the, the backstory? The kids call me Mr. Kevin. But that's but, why. I'm but, like, why do y'all call me that? That's weird, kids. Yeah. No, <laughs> ki- kids are supposed to have fucking manners. They're supposed to say Mr. and Mrs. Uh, I don't. Uh, they a, a kid could call you Mr. B. I guess he could, but that would feel weird to me. I'm like, you know, I'm. Especially you be the fun guy on the talk show. Hey, Mr. B. Hey, <laughs> Mr. B's my father. Yeah. <laughs> call me Mr. <laughs> feels like he should have like a well, balloon you, or something. I mean, not if it was your like your biological child, but okay. if it was your stepchild. Yeah, I guess. He already knows his father. He might just say, hey, Mr. B. So you're against dad? No, I'm not. I'm oh, okay. against dad. No, I'm asking because, you know, a lot of a lot of men, I don't know if it's black men or not, but the only ones I hear talk about are black men. They're like, nobody but not ever call, my kid but, but not ever have to call nobody else dad or whatever. I think that's ridiculous. Uh, now, would you, okay, so would you be okay with... Um, so your kids calling someone else dad? Yes. You would? If, if they're Is a dad. Is dad one and dad two? If, no, just dad. If, they damn sure have to earn it. If they're a dad. That's, right. what I, yeah. that's what I care about. Well, I can be, I will be petty. I'll be petty Paula. I don't want my kids to call someone else mom. What the hell? Why wouldn't you want your kid to have that's more love? mine. And have, they can call her something else. Have more love. Like they're, no. the, what the world needs it's now. It's mine. No, and you, you're not even harmonic or melodious with that. No. No, I don't want to. It don't have to be because the message is there, the melody is in the love. But I think that if the other parent is absent, then especially when the kids are little, they they probably would want to call the person dad because then they like I have a dad too. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, and kids kids are awkward about that kind of thing, and 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 honestly, like I, I come from a, a series of mixed families. You right. know, everyone has. You know, a, a, another parent or another sibling from you know another a, a, situation. Yeah, a lot. A lot of grandparents were Rolling Stones, and they were. You know, they still are. Candy got. Uh, uh, I don't think hey, it be, I don't think it should be forced. Grandma I, had I've a pass. I've seen kids ask, like, "Can I call you dad?" I've seen a lot of kids ask a guy that their mom was, you know, in a relationship with. Can I call? <laughs> because they want to have a dad. I could feel that. My young- that's not wrong with a child to no, feel that way. No, 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 though. That's not at all. My youngest son calls his stepdad dad. No, I have no problem with it because the dude takes care of. Him. He's a good yeah, guy. That's good. He's good. He's good to to my baby mother. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like they they have a they have four other kids together. Oh, wow. Yeah. And mine. Nice. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. First of all, I'm You're not in your ego about it. Which you is can't fortunate. be. You can't be because here's the thing: who does it? Who does it help or hurt? Yeah, the ego doesn't help me either. That's yeah. true. Because I look like a dickhead for for even trying to demand a kid to to not enjoy to not. the family. He his his nuclear family is the, is is worth another man. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I'm still his dad. I don't think he disrespects me as his dad. He still calls me dad. He calls me when he has questions. You know what I'm saying? I see him, but it it. He still has to exist there. That's true. And so everybody else in the house is calling the guy dad. Yeah. And he's like, oh, Mr. 
uh, stepdad. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm and I'm not and I'm not shitting on you at all because every situation is different. Yeah. But because there are four other, he's got four brothers and sisters, and then him. They're all saying dad, and he's for him to be an outsider, and he's the yeah. oldest. That just and that, that feels kind of weird. Stuff matters at that age, like that. That matters, like the differences in the household. But I didn't if have he that wasn't experience. a good dad, yeah. Well, <laughs> you don't deserve for my kid to call you. No, dad. dead serious though. Like, if you're not a dad, you can't be my son's dad. Yeah. Ah. If you're not a good True. dad, you can't be my son's dad because I'm a good dad. Right. So could your if if what if you had a bad relationship with one of your with one of your sons? Okay. Could could you be a good grandpa? I'm okay. Confused. So you're saying I, if my son has a kid, can I still be good grandfather to that? Kid, mm-hmm. even if me and my yeah, son. like like you you weren't I, a good dad to your son, but your right. son has kids, and now so you're saying the guy who comes back on, in in somebody's life after they they were absent for the kid's life, you want to be a good grandpa, absolutely. you want to enjoy your and, your and, senior senior years. And what kind of dickhead would deny their their grant their kid of having a grandfather? Well, now, now I have seen that in situations where the child the well, who may be an adult now has a really horrible or painful past with that parent. Sometimes if the if there's a lot of pain there, that child is not okay with the parent coming in cuz grandparents come in like they you know, now they're ready, ready to, to have spoil. this great relationship and it's yeah. like, "Wait a minute, you weren't even I've seen that happen a lot. You weren't even here for me." But no, you, but, but it's a difference in not being here for them and painful. So you're talking about like torture or like a molestation nah, maybe just, or something? No, no, no. Maybe just a parent. Mm. And I'm thinking of a specific situation. The mom just wasn't there. She didn't right. raise the, the girl. Right. And the daughter had to grow up on her own, dealt with a lot of things because the mom just was not present. Right. And then now the mom wants to be very present um, for the granddaughter. That's touchy. Yeah. But again, I don't, if, if there's love to be given, why would you reject your kid love? I think, well, it, it may cause you pain if, if, if they're loving and you guys haven't resolved that. Maybe it's worth going to therapy or going to counseling together to kind of get through that. I guarantee you'll never resolve it if you don't resolve it. If you don't it. try to. If you yeah. don't resolve it, you'll yeah. never resolve it. So, I, I agree with that. There's Because de- there's, there is work to be done. Right. There's yeah. definitely work to be if done. If there's a lot of pain, I can see how that could be difficult. But um, I know a situation where the mother... Was not around, and the daughter ended up being molested, you know, by the, the grandmother's boyfriend. And then later, the um, the grandmother ch- t- turned a new leaf, and and the mother was kind of like, "What? Like you were a horrible mother to me, you know?" So who got molested, the daughter or the granddaughter? No, the daughter. Okay, yeah. yeah. See, when you start getting into that kind of stuff, of course, now I don't know that. You can ever say it was the grandmother's fault that the yeah, daughter I don't know got molested. It, I, I don't know, but I think that there has to be, there's some, maybe some accountability. I think I saw that on the Yala Van Zandt, but um, <laughs> fix my life. I'm just saying it's it's some real life situations that Miss Van Zandt is helping people through. Um, but my point is... Help, helping. Mm. Well, she's 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 sharing it with the world. She's got an opinion. Yeah, she has an opinion. I don't know if it's right or wrong. Selling it. But my point is... There are people on there, and there are people in a lot of pain. I don't know if she is able to help them or not, but they're in a lot of pain. And I think that person, it almost makes the child feel worse if the parent, you know, comes in to save the day and be be this great person for the grandchild. The child still wants his parents' attention. Right. Even yeah. if you're grown. Yeah. You know? Yeah, in a way. And and I, I think that also what comes in is like that... When you when you grew up with a parent that wasn't there and you've kind of directed your parenting mm-hmm. in, a, in a way like I'm never going to be like my mom or I'm never going to be like my dad, like those kinds of, of, of feelings, then to see them come back and try to be a good grandparent, uh, I've seen people have issues in terms of I don't want you to hurt them the way that you hurt me. Yeah. And so now my parental instinct, instincts are interfering with... My childhood trauma. Okay, is that a a, a way to say it? Yep. Um, so well, it's yeah, just it's not resolved. I think it would be difficult for you to set, to actually have a great relationship with your grandchild if you don't have a good relationship with the parent because that grandchild is going to be like, 
why don't you and mommy get along? <laughs> What's wrong with you and daddy? Like that's going to automatically come into it, even right. if the grandchild loves you because they're pro- they're innocent, but it's still going to hurt them to see the pain between the grandchild and the parent. Yeah. So, you know, anyway, I don't know how we got off on that tangent. All because I wanted to be mister. <laughs> I know. All man. it is, because I just want to be Mister. See, y'all just don't y'all don't respect when a black man You're right. steps up and asserts a little a tiniest level of respect. If you were white, we'd be totally cool with you being Mr. Kevin. All day. It would feel like an episode of South Park. Wouldn't it? <laughs> Are you guys gonna see the Mr. Rogers movie? Nope. Yes. I am going I actually to see look it. forward to it. I, read, I do too. I read his book though. He's an amazing dude. Tell tell no, so there okay, I've I just want to know, and I don't mean this to be in, in uh, inappropriate. There's no molestation or anything, is there? No. No, okay, no he's like he's like a he's a super saint. duper he's dude. Saint. Yes. That's no, what I thought. He's thorough, right? I used to love <laughs> yeah. Mr. Rogers. In fact, and I there's that. a there's a documentary on uh, HBO okay. about about Mr. Rogers. I'm gonna it was pull it up. Freaking amazing. I don't remember all of it because it's a long book. Okay. And, and I, you know, after a while, you kind of just kind of skim. But yeah, I'm talking about civil rights, black people rights, like everything, everybody's rights. Kids, yeah, civil like rights in a weird, in a weird rights. way, Mr. Rogers <laughs> was a conscious um, Forrest Gump. <laughs> now, I'm, you remember the Forrest Gump movie through the 60s and all that? And he was just kind of innocently do. doing do. these wholesome things and, do. and like, hey, no, strange tales. No, 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 no. See, I think it's wrong. He's intentional. There was, I remember a story. He went on Oprah. Mm-hmm. He, he asked, he, he begged, do not have children at the taping. Mm-hmm. He said, um, I, I want this in my contract. Don't have kids. But I mean, you know, he's famous yeah. for being a kid show yeah. person. Yeah. He's like, do not have kids here. Otherwise, it's going to be bad. What ended up happening was he brought, they, she brought kids anyway. Why? I don't Oprah? know. And he ignored all the adults. He got on one knee and talked to each kid and looked them in their eye and gave them attention and time. Wow. And see, he, he had told the producers, do not invite kids because yeah. I'm going to give them my attention. Yeah. They, if they're in the room, they deserve my attention. Yeah. Not you adults. If you want to do an interview with me, keep the kids out of the interview. Otherwise, wow. I'm going to dedicate the time to them. And he did. Good That's for how him. thorough. I'm, That's what I'm saying. I can't. And why don't he, you want to see this movie? I don't know. I just I read the Tom book. Tom Hanks, it's going to be great. That's yeah. why you said Forrest Gump. Could be. That's why you said for me. I didn't but see I, it at all. It's the same guy. But I actually did. I, at, at first, I was like, huh? But I remember it showed, I think it was a far stretch for the fictional character, but it did, you know, the movie showed him going through all these very, you know, different times in our country's, you know, right. change. So yeah. I could see that. Another fun fact about Mr. Rogers, he was wildly rich. His family was like, w- like from wealth. Oh, before he got on television. Yes, like oh, his wow. family was like vacation in, in the Hamptons and then we got a beach house in <laughs> oh, Florida. Like that accent, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 was that your wealthy accent? Yeah, yeah. Was. He brought it out. And it, and it, oh my it God. It became neck, posh. It comes with a little neck bend. Right. <laughs> but look though, like I mean, he he um he I think he went to like an Ivy League college. Like this dude is amazing. He's an amazing guy. I don't know why he hasn't gotten more credit before now. I don't know why you don't want to see this film. I, mean, I, I remember there, like during the documentaries on H. HBO, there were people asking, like, e- even in regards to his sexuality, like, is this guy, like, for real? Mm-hmm. And he was a sexual yeah, dude. He like had a girlfriend everyone, and everything in college. He had a girlfriend? Yeah, yes. a girlfriend, yeah, wife and kids. Yeah, they're what married. They yes. got, he married his girlfriend, but there was like a, there was a relationship. I can't remember. It was a weird one. Like, it was a, it was a seedy relationship and then he got <laughs> with his wife. But it was like, there was, for a second there, he could have been like a porno star oh, or Mr. Rogers. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Do you remember that I'm, No, I'm just playing. I'm just <laughs> like, playing. I don't, hey, hey, it Sounds hey, like we've gone hey, off Hey, there's the a lot of Jesus they leave out of the book. I'm just saying. I don't think he was religious either. Well, no, you are actually. In, you're right. I, I don't. Yeah. I, I agree with you on that. Yeah, I don't. Think I don't I, wow. This is a, this book is is crazy. Like, yeah, yeah. I gotta yeah. see. I gotta. I've gotta watch this documentary and get this book. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. He, he's the Steve Jobs of kids or something. It's, it's like the kid whisperer too. So, yeah. what yeah. was his? Why was he so fascinated with children? No, no. The other way around. I think that that. Kids, he he respected kids as people for real. Like what I was saying in the Oprah show, he mm-hmm. got down on his knees yeah. or knee so that he could look at them eye to eye. Right. And he wasn't looking down, peering down at them. Right. He was not looming over them. He got down on his knee and touched each kid's hand and talked to them into their eyes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's like, what he did with all of us every day. Exactly. That's why you were so calm when he was yeah. talking. Like, man, I yeah. just want to... <laughs> This feels like a, a talking wow. hug. 
It did. Wow. It did. I am not tell. afraid to admit I love Mr. Rogers. I would could not wait because Sesame Street would come on then Mr. Rogers, and I still have vivid memories. You could be like the land of make believe. You'd be like, fuck this nigga sweating these cheap ass sh- shoes. I never thought that. I, I liked his cardigan <laughs> and I liked that. His shoes, he oh. would take off and put on a comfortable yes. shoe. Yes. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You'd be like, man, fuck this old bullshit. And after a while, you'd be like, oh, your eyes light up. You, you start getting a little gloss on them. And you're like, I've been watching this shit for 25 minutes. It's about to go off. And I was I've mad at the all little make puppets believe and back. Yeah. yeah. I've Kong. been met, Lady Elaine. I, I know all the puppets. I don't know that. I don't know wow. that. Part. I do. Yeah, I, I watched that. it. Come on, don't act like that. I, I watched it, but skit. I, I never tried. I never tried to watch Mr. Robinson. Well, that's because you we were a little boy. But it happened, though. I would. I, I ended up did. watching. Twenty five minutes later, like, you know, I have to watch <laughs> I'm still it. here. <laughs> I'm waiting for him to take off the comfortable shoes, put back on the other ones, and leave out right, that door. Right, like it's wild. But yeah, the the guy is is a different kind of dude. So I, I think you'll like enjoy it. the yeah, movie. Yeah, I think the movie's gonna be good. I re, re, late, lately there have been some really good biopics. I didn't get a chance to see Elton John's. Did you guys see that? I didn't even know they had one. See that yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one. Um, of course, the Queen, the Bohemian Rhapsody was amazing. Oh, really? I haven't then, seen that either. That... Oh man, you gotta see that. Okay. Yeah, you gotta you gotta see it. It's, it's you'll really appreciate it because you like music. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I also want to see Elton John. I'm a big Elton John fan. You know what? It, could we the way that we just raved over Mr. Rogers? Like, do I don't know? I, I guess say people it. can't go ahead and I, say it. <laughs> Cleve Huxtable. <laughs> I thought Cleve I Huxtable. was thinking that. I was thinking that. I we were here. I was thinking that because we were talking about Cleve a Cliff. person that talks to kids and res- gives them respect and makes them feel comfortable and of course we were older of course when the Cosby show came out but I think that Bill Cosby had that same type of connection with children Mm -hmm. if you look at the Cosby show and you know you see people try to do it today Ellen or Steve Harvey have the kids the shows the kids nothing compares to Bill Cosby and his ability to really get them to talk and motivate them I I think he did yeah, that whole kids say the darndest thing. I mean, that was something that was pioneered by him as well. And not to mention, like, from Fat Albert to uh, the Picture Electric pages. Company. Right, like yeah. all of that stuff. Yeah, it, Fat Albert is to this day. I let my I introduced it to my kids when they were little. They absolutely loved it. If you if you bring a five year old in today, now they may want to do it on their phone. But it's just <laughs> it's just good. It's just good content. To be honest with you, even <clears throat> even as a, a a parent with new eyes. I was looking at the boys and and the, the shows that they're watching, and they at the time they didn't have any other black kids Mm-mm. cartoons that they could watch. Right. I put them on the Little Bill. On it. Yeah, Little Bill. On was, it. Little Bill was great. Like they love Little Bill. Little, little Bill. No I idea like what little this Bill. is. Yeah. Instead of Caillou crying ass. No, no idea what Caillou is or Little Bill. Mm, what kind of a dad are you? You tell me my kids are grown. My kids are the same age as your kids, and I know about Little Bill mm-hmm. and Caillou. Maybe you were making your kids watch some shit they were too old to watch. I do. I do have a funny story about <laughs> Little Bill and my son. I do have a funny story. Yeah, I don't want to hear the story. No, it's it's, it's you hilarious. He looked like Little Bill or something. No, he didn't look like Little Bill. But I bought him so when he was four. I bought him a Little Bill jacket, right? Because I, he would watch Little Bill, and I bought him a jacket, and the jacket had Little Bill's face on it. They had on a the Little back. Bill jacket? It's a Little Bill jacket. It was merchandise. It they was had merch- one. At I least, at least one. It was merch. This was back in the day when Nickelodeon Yo. was just, just there. But anyway, I would send my son to preschool with the Little Bill jacket on. Well, I noticed that the jacket kept getting put in the back of the closet, right? So I was like, oh, you forgot your jacket. Here, let's let's get your jacket. So finally one day he said, <laughs> I drop him off and he and and he says, every day when he wears the jacket, he gets kids try to fight him <laughs> because of the jacket. Obviously. And I said, Oh my God, why didn't you tell me? And I wouldn't have made you wear the jacket. And he said, Because it's not what they say. It's what I say. Oh, you told the story and, to me before. Yeah, I've heard the story. And he before. did not he did he cared about the fact that I wanted him to wear the jacket and he was doing that for me. And he was taking the fights and, and fighting his way through because he didn't want to tell me That's unhealthy. That's <laughs> Toxic, toxic mom. Oh, it isn't. Correct. I stopped making him wear it, but it's just funny. Why? Did, why would little boys attack another little boy with a Nickelodeon jacket? Are we? Is that a real question? Yes. Kids attack each other for the the smallest things. That's hey, that's hey, a really big thing. Y- y- you <laughs> ever been that? the kid that didn't have Jordans? What color was the little bill jacket? Yellow. Blue and yellow. Uh. <laughs> 
It's like a, a target. Hey, man. Like, look at Mark. <laughs> He's like, every day it happens. Yeah. <laughs> every day. I mean, it's, it's a nice thought, and it's beautiful that he cared more about how you felt. And it showed than, that he was a leader at four. Like, I, I'm I not say gonna, unhealthy. You have to I, know. Well, no, I think that's, it, that's beautiful. It, that's like the end of John Q. Are you, you gotta, serious? You I think know. it showed that he when was that a leader at four. comes from four. under that... that Barrier or whatever. Yeah, and he, he was like, oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That is fucking beautiful. Are you, you got serious? to know yeah. when to hold them and know when to fold them. What are you them. talking oh. about? No, the you're right. guys got thug tears. <laughs> That's a great, John Q was Tell a great movie. Yeah, he came out from underneath the little barrier. His dad was in the police car. Yeah, in real life, that kid died. Really? Yeah. Well, why did they lie in the movie? No, no, that's, that's not, not. No, it's not based on a true story. I'm saying in real life, that little kid died. It Whatever, is, this is based. His I body believe, rejected the, no, the organ. Mean, not true. His yeah. body rejected the organ, no matter how much medicine it's they gave. It's your him. story, and we don't like it, and we reject it. Okay. <laughs> okay, but hold up. I want Denzel to, you, Washington did an amazing job uh, in that film. He played Denzel. You, Den, you no, cried. he did. No, that he actually Denzel went, has two roles. You cried. Though. No, he I went in. He went in. You see, he's trying to divert one talking yeah. about Denzel. Denzel has you two roles. You cried on that film. Did I know you, you cry? Did. Denzel had two did roles. Did you cry? I didn't cry. Denzel had two <laughs> roles. Training. I told y'all I cried on um on uh what's the Tyrese movie? Well, that was dumb. Okay. Okay. Waist deep. Cover, waist deep. I, deep yeah, waist deep. I'm not afraid. He did say that, and I don't even know what to say. Still, at this, I don't. I can't. I was just hold on though. Hold you on. must have had a bad day. <laughs> then, maybe I had a bad week. It's Something like, else you know, was dad's, going on. Because uh, what I do know is that Tyrese. Was not doing anything. <laughs> he walked across listen. the beach. He said he was coming back to get his kid. His kid had <laughs> fake dreadlocks and everything. And the didn't when his kid had dreadlocks in that one. I, didn't I think watch, so. I don't. But I try not to watch deep. movies. Denzel where played, Tyrese is the lead. Denzel. Well, <laughs> Tyrese is an okay actor. You don't think Tyrese is a good? Okay. Proceed. He's better than Tupac. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. I think Denzel, Poetic Justice was an amazing story. I don't. Poetic Justice was awful. That it was wasn't what? awful. Poetic Justice was what not a good movie. What's wrong with you? I, you guys, it was I'm boring. Sure, no, it was not. It, I'm sure, well, it was a love story. Have you watched Juice in a common As day? Like, in, <laughs> have you watched Juice? <laughs> Yo, I still see the it in those. I, I still see it in those eyes, though. It's I, like, I, I, I can't. Even, even Yo, man, about it with now Master you got P. the juice. Huh? Even about it with Master P, I still see it in those eyes. I like don't, I don't expect it to be. No, no I don't. Nope. Is that? I, do you also see Belly? <laughs> yes. I don't. Hey, look, man. We have How some was the really movie so dark. That's on, that was that was artistic. That was, yeah. that was black cinema then. That no, was black yeah. cinema. No, Harlem Belly, Nights, Juice, Eddie Murphy, and uh, Arsenio Hall, and and Robert Temp were doing movies that were not that did not look like that. They were doing. Yeah, well, they had money. Eddie Murphy was paid. Eddie Murphy was Michael Jackson rich. In the Belly 80s. looks like it was in the red box. <laughs> he just came straight to the red box. Now, yeah. now you no, say that. Back then, that shit was dope as hell. No, no, Hype Williams no, no, in that no black shit. and white. Juice Belly was, was dope. Juice was awful. There was no part of Juice that was good. Everybody in it sucked. There were no good actors in Juice. It don't matter. You got the juice was, now, man. There, nah, man. It was off. Like that you got dude the was juice wet. now, man. It was a, Tupac it, was bad. It, it, it was, it was bad. a message. It, it, no. Juice was a Rotter message. Man was whack. The light skinned dude was whack. Special you Ed was whack. Like, we did head, think that. What, was, what was his name? Was it Hakeem? He, the white, the light skinned dude was cute. We liked him. But he, he wasn't was so a good sad actor. that he died so early and in then, the story. And then he was in love with my uh, the toasted oats. <laughs> you motherfucking tripping. I'm going to give you some toasted oats. He's a bad. There were no good actors. They in were none young. Of those it was the beginning roles for a Love lot of Jones people. is one of my wife's favorite movies. You do like Jones, Are you no. saying no. that? Was it Quiles? Are you saying Which one that? Which motherfucker skills steal? Are you saying that? <laughs> Love Jones is not a good movie? No, Love Jones is a good movie. Okay, I'm like, come on now. Love Jones is a good movie. Yeah, Love Jones is a good movie. Okay, have you guys been watching Power? Uh huh, I haven't seen this week though. Nah. Okay, so, so there's a whole internet movement to give acting classes to um, Lala. All of them. <laughs> who, who, acts, who is a good actor and, on that show? And the Tariq. There, there, there is a movement. Who? Tariq and who? I didn't say any names. I'm just saying oh, that, said that Tariq and somebody. Lala and Naturi, oh. people are saying that they have, because their 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 roles are big, bigger and have expanded, and people are saying that they need acting classes right away. Lala is bad. Tommy, <laughs> the white dude, fucking awful. He's not a you good- You think he's bad? None of them are good. Ghost ain't even good. They, I like Tommy. They all suck. And I mean, you know, hey- I don't hey, think they suck. I do. It's bad writing, too. 
It's getting it's, worse. It's not as good as it was. I'm early so on. glad this is the last season. Oh my god! Just like Walking it's just Dead, being contrary. No, for no Walking reason. Dead, same thing. Like it I mean, was good people, in the beginning. People are hard critics of entertainment anyway. I mean, like, I do you know that, how much terrible some... music is out there that people love? Yeah, people no. love terrible music. Yeah, yeah, but I think that people fall in love. I think it's the same way it was with Scandal, and there's several other shows that took on like cult. Followings that after a while the storyline just you don't really know where to go with yeah, it. Yeah, it gets fickle. It's you get wore out on it. I mean, at one point, Orange is the New Black was right. the hottest shit on earth. I watched and two seasons, never yeah. watched it again. Yeah, it's hard to keep something right. tight. But that's why we were talking about Seinfeld before we started. I love the fact that Jerry Seinfeld let go of Seinfeld at the time when they were on top. Because right. when you milk it out, it just. I mean, at the point scandal, we were like, what is happening at this point? This is not even what this was. Walking the dead, the zombies started talking and <laughs> congregating and shit. Like, you know, come on, man. What are we doing here? Like, come on. Let it go. Right. Yeah, like, that, that means it's that's over. That's what you do as a writer, man. You exhaust all the ideas. No, all the don't. possibilities. Nah, you but you go keep home. the integrity yeah, of the we, show. You want to keep the integrity of the show. They have alternate endings and shit. So you said, are you, okay, let's make, it, let's, let's make a ruling here. Are you guys, are you guys saying we're going to weigh in do we think that power has lost the integrity of the show? Yeah. I think you just overdose on the adrenaline. It don't hit you the same way after it a certain while. You become numb to but it. But see, Empire was like that. It Not saying that way. Empire was ever as a solid show as far as the writing was concerned. But I think that there was so much drama to get... Pe- I mean, it was just drama, drama, drama. So after a while, people become numb and it's like, okay, now what? Well, you know what? I'll say this as well. I, I think the way that we consume uh, TV and, and movies as well... It has changed because everyone wants to binge watch everything. Right. Um, I, I actually like the move that they made recently to say we're going to start dropping in episode right. form every week. Yeah. Right. To make you wait, give you something to anticipate. May like like that delay is is healthy. Right. But we consume stuff so, so fast that we think everything is trash, even though we just spent the entire day watching all of the seasons. And no, you know I know that it shouldn't be because I watched the entire um, Spike Lee's. Uh, She's got to have it. In about a twenty-seven hour period. Yeah, see if if that was if that was a case of donuts, man, you had diabetes. You can't. Well, my concern you can't is consume that consume that much. That my concern that is that we are losing. Just like music, I was wondering today, and I was as I was driving over here. You know how music became first. You had like there was only the good music made it out, right? Because the the label took about a year at least a year, probably more, to put an album out for an artist, right? So you wouldn't have like like Chris Brown putting out 60 songs every couple of months. Like that never happened. It was always like, we're really going to whittle this down until we get the best and then we're going to wait. We're going to set it up with marketing and all that. When the internet came out and people are downloading, now people are, you have to put out more and more information, more and more content, more and more music. So I'm wondering, as I was watching The Godfather of Harlem last night on Epics, which is a whole new network, Great piece. It's a, it's a series. I watched the first two episodes because they were free. You don't have to subscribe for the first two. Great series. I remember I, I got Netflix because of House of Cards. Amazing series. But I'm wondering because it, there's so many different networks. There's so many different ways to, to watch content. Are we losing? Are we doing the same thing with movies and television that we did with music to where now it's just out there. There's not really a way to really connect. You used to be able to watch, okay, Thursday nights is must-see TV or, you know, this Friday night is da-da-da-da. Now, I don't know when stuff comes on. You just watch it at your time. You don't really connect with things the same way as you used to when Family Ties, the Cosby show, and then Family Ties came on. That was like an event. People would sit in front of their televisions together. TGIF. I don't think, well, that was Thursday. TGIF was the ABC with fa- with Family, Family Matters, Matters and, 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 and Full then House Full and, House. Yeah. So, I'm saying we're not, we, we had, those were staple shows. Seinfeld was probably one of the last staple show. So well, now. I got a recent one. What? Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, right. Game of Thrones was. But very few others. Very few others. So I'm saying, do you think that we're, the same thing that happened in the music industry is happening to television? In a way, yeah. It's like when Master P started dropping uh, albums with 28 songs on it. And only one of them made good. Exactly. Well, well, yeah, that was just it. Two like props. you, you, you. Yeah. When you, I think when you focus on qu- on quantity over it's, quality, yeah. it does show. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's possible with 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 moving pictures. Like, well, it's. I think. Well, it's, how? But how? First of all, it's, how it's are you difficult get the money? to be that excellent in everything that often. Mm-hmm. 
And and it's not it's not special. You can't hide. It your used mistakes. to have to go through Paramount or now you we could get together and decide we're gonna put something out on the such and such network, charge people two dollars a month. There's a horse riding network that you pay four dollars a month, and oh, okay, don't give me those looks. I, we all have a right to like our different uh, select hobbies, but the point is, anybody can put out content. Horse TV. It is horse TV. <laughs> it's called Ride. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's even got a snazzy name. It's like it's a Rod. is it a logo with a guy like this or some shit? Wow! I created some content for them. You are Ride. a cornball. <laughs> okay, okay, and okay. you're not. She I'm did tired. just nerd out real quick. Yeah, right? you're a uh, cornball. Right. <laughs> and I'm in the I'm in the company of my friends. I'm so cool. <laughs> Scar said, "All oh, my friends." Oh, <laughs> we appreciate your individuality. <laughs> right. No, I'm serious. What do y'all? What do you guys think about that though? Because there's not. I think it's more difficult, honestly, with moving pictures, just because. The um, I think that our threshold is a lot higher. Mm. We expect more out of visual. A, a visual. I don't. I think like YouTube changed this mm -hmm. because everyone okay. YouTube and cell phone. Yeah. Everyone's able to record and and edit. Like you can literally edit a movie on your phone. Mm. And like if you've again watched any anything that your ch children is watching. Especially on YouTube, it's kids playing with toys. That's that's what they're watching. That. They're watching other kids play with toys. It's it's it is like this new genre, but it's not like great camera work or you know these flashy special effects. Kids don't give a shit about that. They're just watching other kids have fun. What is their obsession and people with like the a part of the uh, of the the I guess realism, the uniqueness. What is the children's obsession with the shark? do. I don't even know what that is. I, I don't know what children's uh, obsessions are. This. I don't know why children are obsessed about a lot of shit, but <laughs> I think that hypnotized. Have you seen them when they when that song comes on? I don't even mm -hmm. know what that is. It's crazy. Your granddaughter watches it, I'm sure. It's a song that comes on that all babies get in the trance. Oh, really? Yeah. Like the Teletubbies did? Yeah, yeah. It's like except it's worse. It's crazy. I don't know. I still think that there's a there's a higher threshold, and that's why they still make millions of dollars on movies. When Marvel comes out with a movie, people prefer to go to the movies instead of bootlegging it. But that's the point that 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 we're only. I had a conversation with Roger Bob, and he was saying that that those type blockbusters and Christmas movies those drive the the industry. The other movies are funded by those. So th those are the ones. July that, the fourth and Christmas. Yeah, that that block summer blockbuster, which is going to be an action movie, probably a comic, you know, a mm -hmm. Marvel or 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 a comic fe feature, and then Christmas movies because people are in the spirit to go out to the the theater with their friends and family. But other other than that, the movies are not making money. Like you know, when's the last time you gone to the, went to the movies? I went to see it, Hustler. Oh, that was recently. What, yeah, what a about you? Weeks ago. Um. I went to see Lion King. I, I went and saw. Damn, that was a long time ago. Yeah, I just saw um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. How was that? Good, really good. Well, you know what? The other stuff that I honestly, and this is part of the way that technology has changed as well, because a lot of uh, big budget releases are now in um, like Netflix. Mm -hmm. Now they're they're yeah. they're like Bright, being released the Will there. Smith Bright yeah. movie. Yeah, right. Like that was like a theater the movie. Lion King isn't the most recent movie I've seen. It's yeah. just the last time I was went at the, the theater. theater. But to watch Dave Chappelle, uh, like it, it didn't have to come out like uh, Eddie not, Murphy yeah, that, Raw. Yeah. But so okay, in so theaters. My, my comparison though still has movies a little bit on top because even Marlon the, Wayans film. Even though uh, you're willing to pay a streaming service to watch Netflix or Hulu or whatever, you still ha do go to the movie theaters and pay a ticket price. Whereas with music, a lot less. We'll, we'll, but still though, and with music, we'll pay a streaming service, but we're not buying an album. I, I but album. we are buying tickets to a show. Yeah, I don't know if that's And I think we're more likely to get merch now. Everybody's selling t-shirts. Like t-shirts, hats, stuff like that. I'm not likely to do that. I don't. You don't want someone's someone's name on there or like a tour t-shirt? I did get a Janet Jackson one, but I didn't have to pay for it. Yeah, I don't think if I had to pay for it, I would get it. We're not talking about your connections right Unless it was, and I would get it on, I mean, Beyonce and Jay-Z one. But I'm just saying, I don't know if I would invest the money. Because another thing, everything has access. You can make... We could make it. I could make a T-shirt. I don't have to. I don't we have, have to do that. We have T-shirts, Music yeah. of Life shirts. I, we don't have to Plug. get a Whitney Houston T-shirt. I could just Whitney Hutton it up. You guys remember that? Whitney Hutton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you remember that with Martin when um, yeah. Rub Man put Whitney Hutton on the shirt instead of Whitney. <laughs> no, but yeah, you don't. You that's what I think. Every everything is. <laughs> we we have access to so much stuff. 
Yeah. I don't. I don't. That now, of course, I'm not the demographic that does buy that because now, if you if you talk about um, a Justin Bieber concert or I don't know the the young uh, Lil Pump or somebody like that coming and young women, young teenage girls, they're they're gonna buy the merch. But that's always been the case. Right. But I just don't. I mean, Maxwell was here last weekend. I'm not buying Maxwell merch. Yeah. Well, you guys can't buy it. Mm. I don't want it. Yeah. I'm good. I enjoy the experience. I don't go for the to take the merch with me. <laughs> no. Maxwell the type of nigga to wear the female shirt with Maxwell <laughs> on it. I learned that Travis Scott has cereal. Travis Scott is like huge. He has cereal. He's huge. He's huge. Yeah. That Netflix. Yeah, he had a documentary as yeah, well. That's how I watched Which it. Which is dope. It was I didn't very watch dope. That. It's dope. You should watch it. I'm not a Travis Scott fan, really. I'm not either. I but I didn't even know his impact. Now I'm like, whoa, okay. Yeah, what is his impact? He has impact. He has impact on young people. He does. Oh, on the young people. Not you. No, but I mean, on, but I thought you meant on something important. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you're not, you're not Travis Scott demographic. No, you're missing. You're still missing what I'm saying. Having impact does not necessarily mean you have impact. It's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm serious though. Because- that's, but that's like saying if a tree falls in the forest and no one's around, it, does it make a sound? It is. It is. It's like saying that. It is like saying. It doesn't feel like that. I, what, I'm, what I'm, my point is that I don't think that the impact that he has really matters in the world on the world scope. It may mm. matter to music. It may matter to to like I guess well, that's culture what we're in some way. About music and culture. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's why that's why I'm saying like to someone else it. It means a great deal. Yeah, his the, his songs have saved their life. Oh, I love that. That's a that's an odd thing. I mean, you know, uh, God bless you. I guess I don't know. Is that what I should say? What's I that? don't think what? that. I right, mean, that was you, random. Was like what? what that was fuck? random. But well, no, 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 music, no, music, no, music. Let me finish my thought. Let me finish my thought. I, I, that is very odd to me when people find the most innocuous things mm-hmm. to say save their lives. I think that they just want a way to connect with a, a celebrity. I don't so mm. I think, but I think music is powerful. But does that just feed our egos? I, I think, think music. I don't think so. I think music is powerful. Now, can I say because I have, I have, I cannot say a song has ever saved my life, but I can say that I've heard a song and I've, as a writer, I I've played music to put me in a certain mood or I've been able to connect sure. with something that has done that. So I think, but we also realize that there are a lot of when young people are dealing with a lot. They always have been, right? And I think that sometimes having something to connect to, and it, you know, it may not be tangible, but having something to connect to that that validates them, it does make the it does make all the difference in the world. I don't, yeah. and I think if their reality is it matters, then that's all that matters. Right? I mean, I, I'm just blown away by it. I'm not saying yeah. it's not real to them. I'm just blown away by it. What's your What's your favorite breakup song? Oh man, I have so many. You know, you had a bad breakup. Don't hurt now. And what? It don't hurt now. Teddy P. Listen <laughs> to the, the end. Listen to it all the way to the what end. What did he say? Listen to it all the way to the end. I'm you see, not, he found I'm gonna, the words. I'm going to pull up the lyrics. They, they spoke to you. What, what did they say? Tell nah, us, B. Because you got to listen to it. I, I don't want to spoil it. When you get a chance... Don't I, Hurt Now. It Don't Hurt Now by Teddy P. Listen to it all the way to the end, though. The, the vamp, when he's he's like doing his little like playing with the... You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. the background singer, Don't Hurt Now. He's saying some stuff on top of the... He's singing it, but it's like the extra bonus. You got to listen to it to the end. the extra bonus. You got to listen to it to the end. It's the ad libs. Yeah. Yeah, you got to listen to it to the end, though. I'm, we're going to listen to it and we're going to listen to it, audience, after we rap. Because I got to hear it. My problem is Avant <laughs> um, Separated. Avant? Avant. That's weird. Okay, so. Avant, I'm the king now, Avant? I don't know that, Avant. I don't know that. I know Kiki. You know, R. Kelly's in jail, so he's he's, he's the king now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't pick that up. Kiki Wyatt and Avant's song is the bomb, though. Like, I can't even think of a better word because of that time period. That's what you said. That's a strong strong breakup What is that, First Love or something like that? yeah, There's my first. Is, I think it is my first. My love. first love. Yeah. That song now is great. Mm-hmm. What, what about mm-hmm. how? Uh, how did you get here? Nobody's supposed to be. Uh, nah, not song. my vibe. Yeah, I, 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 I feel you with Deborah Cox, but no. <laughs> she can sing <laughs> her ass. She's off, Canadian, though. eh? Uh, she can sing uh, her ass off. I don't please don't do Deborah Cox like that. Deborah Cox's time. voice. And her last name is Cox. Pl- that's why she played Whitney Houston because she could sing. What did she play Whitney Houston in? She played Whitney Houston in the movie. She could sing. Which movie? Lifetime movie. It might have been. Which movie? Nobody yeah, saw that. Exactly. Like, nobody yeah. even knew. I don't remember that. I'm like, Deborah Cox What's played Deborah Cox Whitney been doing Houston? recently? Oh, you know, she was Whitney in the, in the movie. <laughs> she can sing. No, I she have, can. I have to say mine is Music Soul Child, Half Crazy. Is that okay. a breakup song? I don't know. 
I think it's yeah, just like I a want relationship my friend song. Back. That's ooh. it's a relationship song. Okay, it going boom, back and boom, forth. Boom, 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 it sounds boom, crazy. Then yeah, the music. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> okay, I don't know, that's but that's joint. not a painful song. It's just like a. It's a he crazy was a man song. singer. Ha, <laughs> it ain't many of those. Oh my god! Yes, I'm a I man never singing. Yeah. Man, man, shit. Yeah. Say it with your chest. I mean, Teddy P was a man. I mean, Teddy mm-hmm. P was a man. He, he favored the transsexuals, but he was a man. Oh, God. Which was, uh, what, is this going to. Uh, <laughs> maybe we've always been here. Been where? Here. We No, I, 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 he's the only guy I know who still got respect, even though. He's still dead, dead. You know what I'm saying? He got, mm-hmm. was in a wheelchair. People still like, wheelchair, transsex. It don't matter what this dude does. He was like pure gold. He's still Teddy P. Yeah. 70s was a wild time. It yeah. was. He's a wild was boy. Obviously, a wild time. Richard and uh, it, nobody, nobody charged Richard Pryor with it either. Yeah, we're gonna let yeah. him have it. Yeah, uh, let him have yeah. it. Maybe, maybe it's our generation that messed it up and started acting all homophobic and stuff. Maybe I don't know. The sixties were very serious, <laughs> but the seventies were very the 60s serious. Sixties called the seventies. Like yes, absolutely, because everybody was so mad. Right. That's when when drugs start hitting the streets, <laughs> and then everybody just got a little ooh, yeah. Y'all are out That's of control happened. tonight. He's singing, and you're they can. T- tilting faces to the side with, with rich accents. Y'all are having a good time. I'm reading these lyrics. Where's your stick? You're supposed to... I, I, I'm out with it tonight. You're supposed to be quicker <laughs> right. than this. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I think that's interesting, though. I, th- I think that so much is changing. I was talking to a friend of mine that's an author, best-selling author, and um, she was she's transitioning into doing oh, uh, content. Touching into doing man that's you know, the well, transition. Hey, that that, that you, word. These now days, is, you yeah. have to hear the end of the sentence. Right. I was. I already. I was already done with the end of the sentence. I already put a period on it. I thought she was going to become a man. No, not this one. She's transitioning into what? Into not this one. Doing content, one. film, and television. Yeah. I mean, oh, okay. Film yeah. and television. Yeah. As opposed to books. And I was wondering. I was having a conversation with my son. I was like, "Do you think people are reading books?" I don't think. I think we're learning to to digest information differently. Like you talked about binge watching, where we are a microwave society, and to the point where our phones are so we want everything right now. I don't think that we have time to invest in a book. Let me give you some more game because I know you know what I'm saying these gems I be giving y'all. Oh yeah, uh, we're so here, thankful. Here we go. Here we go. Certain people are still hoopla. Uh, y'all see this hoopla? What is hoopla? Mm-hmm. You see that? Download yeah. hoopla. First, go to the library and get mm-hmm. a library card. Mm-hmm. Download hoopla. And 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 it's gonna ask you for your library card number. You can download audiobooks, and I'm talking about anything you can think, pretty much anything you can think of. Wow, rich dad, poor dad type stuff. Anything, novels, like whatever it is you can think of, mm-hmm. it's there. Wow. I'm going in my wallet because I want to find. I suddenly am inspired to. He can't hear um, you. You're not I, talking to Mike. I'm suddenly inspired to pull out my library. Well, card. Well, you should have a library card, right? I think that. Unless you just like spending a lot of money on novels I'm an intelligent and books. Negro and I have you access should, to books. I'm impressed with you guys and I, I feel oh you should have a library card. Oh I my god. I am card. I am out. absolutely yes. today is not a good day for me. And you must <laughs> You are, guys still have library cards? Absolutely. Yes. And it's up to date. It's not I don't owe absolutely. any money on it or yes, anything. This is current. <laughs> they will they will affect your credit if you don't pay it. <laughs> it even, really? Yeah, yeah, they even give you like discounts on tickets to the zoo and stuff yeah. like that. Yep. Yeah. You, know, you guys are I mean, you're in a newly parent situation. I'm like, I haven't been to the library since my kid was studying and had to go to I'm, the library. I am studious. I am learned. You should you should you should read occasionally, I think. I do read. I just don't go to the library. You go I just, buy a book? I just go to Amazon and I just down yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean I guess so, but I just I would it's easier, and I honestly. and I like like I have a bookshelf, and I like I love hardback books still. Right. So yeah. actually, speaking of books, the last book I read was on the airplane a couple of days ago. I read Rick Ross's biography. Mm. Dope, dope. I'm actually and fascinated that's all I have to by... say about that. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> I'm not feeling. Everybody it. doesn't pick a good co-author. Well, it looks like his co-author didn't pick a good author <laughs> because <laughs> it, the book is more. Co-author, like it doesn't feel like Rick Ross was involved at all. Uh, and so when I was reading, I was like, this doesn't feel authentic. Then later I was talking to one of my friends, they were like, Yeah, well, Rick Ross just said he hasn't even read it himself. And I was like, Yeah, okay. I well, I mean right. it's his life. Why you gotta read it? Well, he should want to make sure that it flows how right. Many, it doesn't even feel authentic. How many music just love lives do you listen to after we record them? I listen to them. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I mean, I don't I but a book. Even if it's just to make sure that it's <laughs> your right. book, shit, yeah, like so. Yeah. So, do you think Gucci Mane approved the final version? I do. 
You I think do. he said I felt that I read both send of them. It back. I think I don't know about I think Gucci was more involved in the process. And I can say that from reading both books. This feels like a caricature of who Rick Ross always wanted to be. Oh. Gucci's book was more real. Like it didn't show him always winning. Rick Ross is like, I was always a handsome fat nigga. <laughs> I, I, yeah, <laughs> pretty, I can hear that. Was like, that the, it was list? just like he always, it never showed him as being, uh, as it, it never depicted any of his story if his life story is being negative. He was it, never a struggling family man? Never. He was always, and he, he, you know, he talked about the fact that um, Trick Daddy was like the project rapper, but he always had, at, you know, could see like Bentleys in this opulent lifestyle. And he didn't want to be pigeonholed into like being the project rapper. I mean, that could be true. Was, was it, all this happening at the, at the CO desk? It, it started with well, a dream. Well, and that's the, that's the thing. I was waiting for that story. That is at... The last fourth of the book, does he go back and acknowledge that he actually did work there? He said he didn't want to put it earlier in the book because he didn't want it that he didn't want that to color the story because that's not who he was. So he's a dope boy, a a a, a slick, and he wasn't fat. He was husky and with a good build, and. He was always. Does that come with titties? <laughs> uh, no. And 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 passing out. But um, <laughs> wow. But I mean, come on, that's too much. That was that was. I'm, I'm impressed that that came from you. That was you violent. Kind of, well, that was, was a no, violent stab. You can't you can't be unhealthy and be and just be. But anyway, so through the book, through the book, he is he's a dope boy that is successful, right? Okay. And he manages to outsmart other people, and he gets you know. It's the sexiest story. I'm is. selling sizzle. It here. is. It is. And then it gets to the last fourth of the book, and he admits that he was that he did this just because he was supposed to need a job. And it's like, was this during the time that you were a dope boy? And if it was, that's fine. But he says he didn't really care about it. But then he was there for like a year and got promoted. So it's like, is it sold as an autobiography though? It is. Oh, because that sounds it sounds fancy. It sounds like it is a, fancy. It sounds like a novel that like based on the and truth. And that's what I feel. And that's why yeah. I felt like the co-author authored a novel. And Rick Ross put his name on it. That's probably how he got the money to to get his shit out. Because like, as a CEO, he's probably working like a hundred hours a week <laughs> for a year. <laughs> the you book opens. The book up. opens with a with the police bursting into the, the his mansion. See? him getting on the ground. Like it opens like a novel, it's like a sexy. movie. It's like it's, Goodfellas it's, yeah. or something. It it's is. Like, yeah, it's That's like, what I was reading. I was just like, this doesn't. He like a BT a, movie. He I paints a picture out with of the his action. mom and dad being this really educated. Like nothing is bad. He does okay. drugs well. I know his parents is. were great. His sister was amazing. His friends all get, weren't smart enough to. But he always eluded the cops. Like. It's too much. I'm gonna tell you what it is. You do you remember that day when you heard that mixtape? You're like, this is a damn album. You remember that day? That yeah. time period? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When they de- redefine what a mixtape is, yeah. Yeah. that's what this is. They're redefining what a, a, novel a biopic is. or a or a uh, or autobiography is. Yeah. They're redefining it because then th- that's no one's life. This is no one's that's life. That's no one's well, life. Well, guess what? One day he's going to do a movie based on the book. Yeah. Hey, no, of course. Based but, on and, the book. And absolutely. that's the thing. They started making mixtapes that were actually really albums. So yeah. you, how are you going to judge a mixtape? What's the best mixtape ever? Drake, Drake so far gone. Yeah. What, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, not, that's not even comparable. Yeah, that's true. You can't like, this is not mixtape. Right, this, this is, is something that somebody did in their in their in their basement, and yeah. they just it happened to be dope. Huh. This, this is, is a full production, fucking like album. got amazing producer. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's so the same thing. It's 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 not. I it's was tacky a little bit. It's a little tacky because it's very tacky, because yeah. it. How do you compare that then to Quincy Jones's autobiography? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Which now, was a good which was a good autobiography. Is. And I'll tell you who else is a good autobiography. Rock him. I have I have Rock him's also. Really good. I Miles mean, Davis is a really good one. Also. Yeah, his is his as well. Um, I, L.A. Reid. Is is good as well. Was that the one where he's telling a lot of those kind of truths? <laughs> yes, that's what that would be. It. Where he's like, Wendy came to my house, but, and I gave her the whole song in five it, minutes. He's like, mm. but at least it doesn't only it doesn't on. only show him. It it shows him as being insecure and trying to get himself. This Which, book, who L.A. Reid, Reid. Oh, it, it, I guess. a little bit, not much. No, no, no. This book paints Rick Ross. You would think Biggie did not exist. <laughs> like, I don't know who this person is wow. He is always And then he has no problem With shitting on Everyone else Like it's 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 amazing That's odd That's Yeah odd. It's weird How did he How did he portray MMG the, the other rappers on MMG 
Um, that must be in the they have not shown up. <laughs> um, the first what seventy five percent of the book is really like an ode to his amazingness. This this is this this it's not it's not autobiography. And so at the point that he that he explained the CEO stuff, I stopped reading because I was like, I'm not gonna do this anymore. That doesn't seem like an autobiography. I think it's it's the reinvention of of the autobiography. It's Maybach music. Yeah, it's what it is. There are no rules anymore. Yeah. Not about truth telling. Rakim's book is lyrically beautiful, which makes sense because that is who he is. But it's 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 you know you can tell that there's co- a co-author, but it feels like him. He's painting a picture. It makes sense. I don't know what the and Gucci's. I wasn't mad at Gucci's. I actually, I mean, I was actually yeah, pleasantly was surprised. Uh, I heard a lot of good things about pleasantly Gucci's book surprised. As well. um, Charlemagne was one of my favorite ones. Wasn't or was? It was. Which one? Um, the first one. I didn't read uh, Shook Ones. I need to read that next. What is the first one? The first one is, um, oh my God. Oh my God. I, I did a whole article on it. Um, hold on. I did um, Charlemagne and then uh, Jennifer Lewis. It was the one about mental illness or no? No. Mental illness is the second one. Um, this was just basically his story about coming up okay. and trying it to. It was honest. It was honest. It, it, I mean, in order to be honest, you can't you can't always be the hero. You can't win. Everything. You have to yeah. always. You have to be clear to 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 black privilege. Black privilege was the first one. Oh, okay. Charlemagne. You know, you have to be honest, and you have to be able to show your the things that you had to overcome. And in this story, Rick Ross doesn't overcome anything. Not even his weight. <laughs> <laughs> Not even his way. Damn. He bought the block. He he did. He, he was always the one that she said he didn't over. He didn't even overcome his own way. Well, I'm just saying because for a kid to say that it never that when they were little, their family has always been known for having handsome husky men. That's not re- when kids are little. They pick on each other for. Anything you can you can have little bill jackets, little bill jackets, and somebody. But so for you to be a you know, obese child, and so you, want, and, so and you not wanted to, admit, to you wanted to see little Ricky getting hit and playing dodgeball. I want to see it. You want that's that's the picture she want. I get no, it. No, I just want it to be real. Like you can yeah, you can make it. yourself the prom king, but also show us when you went through puberty. You know, be, like be the scrawny kid. Yeah, you got to go through it all. You got to be able to show, or you're not you're not being you're not you're not being authentic. I that's not think. a reflection of culture though. Because what culture is is about not highlights. Now. now it's about the highlights. IG is your highlight reel. It's not. Yeah, your... but I think when you're showing up, when you're when you're when you're writing a book, you the high the what the point of the book is to show what you've overcome. A book to show you overcome. Yeah, that's one a kind book. of book. Uh, yeah, a book. A book. A book. most yeah. niggas don't deserve a book. I agree. Now I'm not saying Rick Ross isn't special because he rose to the top. Uh, you know the, of the fray. So I'm not saying he isn't special. Right. But Everybody who's special don't deserve a book necessarily. I agree. We don't need to hear everything. I was surprised at Gucci's book. You said that four times. So I, I am still I gotta, shocked. I gotta yeah. check it out now. I'm still shocked. I can't I can't wait for some of the like I can't wait till Kanye tells his story. I can't telling the it. Kanye West story. He keeps I'm not a, telling it. I'm I want him to stop talking so we can no, prepare I, for it. You won't understand it. Mm. He keeps talking. He will never have a buildup. <laughs> he keeps talking. I don't think, I don't think he'll Actually, understand it. Here's a good question. What's better, musicians' books or musicians' films? Give me an example of somebody who did both. Yeah. I don't know if I remember anybody who did both. Can Ooh. you think of one? Oh, someone that's done both. Uh, well, give me an example of I mean, that's, that's, film. that's tough. I don't, give me an example. Because if I thought about someone's film, I mean, we could say Travis Scott documentary or, or, that's not the same, or maybe though. even something that, something more artistic like um, the, what was it, Runaway? Was that Kanye's? That was uh, kind of like a video, though. Yeah, that, that was, was like, that was a, uh, like a short film. It was art. Uh, I don't like the comparison. I don't like the comparison. I, I, the reason why I asked that is because it's kind of hard for me to compare. Quincy Jones' book to uh, anything. Somebody Quincy movie. Jones' documentary is dope as well. Like Thriller or Moonwalker, but I don't know that Michael Jackson did a book. So that's yeah. that's the part that's no, tough to Quincy, maybe we can't maybe it's too soon to have that conversation. Quincy Jones' documentary is I, as dope as his book. I watched most of it. Yeah, but in the movie, it's not they went so in depth of how how in love he was with white women. But in the book, they did. <laughs> they did. Yeah. They did. Like, they they're did. like, this dude, love him a white woman. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it, but what I liked about I'm the serious, documentary. It, wasn't it like it that did, in the book? It was. But in the documentary, it showed his, it, it explained his issue with his mom that set him off on a journey of 
chasing white, white his women. His mom was like a prostitute his, or something? No, his no, she mom was had mental illness. That's she had mental was. illness right, right, and right, she right. and she she kind of abandoned, you know, kind of abandoned right. him and he he held that against her to this day. Right. You know, he she never can't see got the grandkids. Over that. Raggedy yeah. bitch. <laughs> that was my Quincy Jones impression. Oh, okay. Of oh. that moment. Okay. Yeah. And I thought he, that was and, from Waiting to Exhale. And, and <laughs> on, in line with your vulnerability, he in the beginning of the, the documentary, he was like in the hospital for yeah. a minute. Like, yeah, because he was doing too much. Doing he too was much. old yeah. and it was, he was, it was catching up to him. Now, I, but, but he deserves, I mean, he's, he's, he's had such a, such a body of work and, and being able to be at the top of his game consistently. The funny thing about Quincy Jones is he just started throwing everybody under the bus. Right. He was just like, I'm in my 80s and it's going down. Yeah. And he was gay and he slept with him and he was an asshole. And yeah. he was just like, okay, Michael Jackson wasn't shit. It just all came out. So, <laughs> okay. All right. Old Quincy is not kind. Right. <laughs> are, are you going to become old and lose your filter? I think we all do. I look forward to that. Not giving a shit. I lost it a while ago. Man. I started, I can feel it just slipping out more But it's something more. about being, it's got to be something about being like, 60 and doing it Well because they can't Take anything from you what can, they, what can they When you're 60 Where can they take from you Nothing I don't want With the shit y'all are, Y'all are giving me anyway So <laughs> Well all the, all the people That are losing their jobs Because yeah, they're but on, you're 60 uh, fucking public job. Calling people like, niggers man, And shit like that You get to 60 Whatever you Wherever you're working At 60 You're like Those are all baby this. boomers Doing that shit I don't think they care Yeah they don't give a shit My anymore. mom does you, not care What are you gonna take From a 65 year old They're like eh I'm, I'll figure it out. My like, mom you know. is so disrespectful on her job. I swear, she doesn't. I mean, they just—they they are just dis. But you know, once you once you've seen all the game, because I think even in this age, I start people coming to me, and I'm like, girl, I don't, I know what this is. Like, I, I don't, I'm not even. Where I used to get so worried and be like, oh my. Now I just be like, look, I don't have time for this. Yeah. You no, know? and it's it, the older you get, the less patience you have. That's for the that same mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been I've been here for a minute. I know what you're doing. Ain't nothing slick to a can of oil. There you go. There you look, go. At, look here, buddy. He just has them waiting. Hey. They're on deck. <laughs> where, where have you been the past couple of weeks? You... I've become my grandfather. <laughs> Watch I out realize that. that. I've become my grandfather. Watch Your out grandfather that. is on social media. Hard right? times make a monkey eat red pepper. Your granddad's on, on social media pushing up. No, that's my granddaddy. What did you say? My granddaddy. What did you say just a second ago? Grand, granddaddy is still rolling. I'm confused. Did you say? I said my grandfather. So you have a different. It's a different. <laughs> yeah, concept. those are two. Those are two different people. Oh my god! My okay. grandfather was a grandfather. Oh, okay, but your granddaddy grand still pushing up. Roll dice. Okay, daddy. Yeah. So did y'all go on a date? He pushed up. He did not push. He up. did pull up. He pulled up and he, then he pushed up. <laughs> he did not pull nor push up. He mm. pulled up on that comment. Probably knows Cleve. Why didn't respond? I don't know she's what chill, you she's wanted scared. the response she's intimidated. to be. Oh, you didn't want to do it publicly? I want to get a foundation. <laughs> I, just, I respect that. Like, girl, what are you get your foundation. Keep thing, people out your business. This thing new. This thing feel hey. new. <laughs> I hate you. Hell yeah, this <laughs> thing feel new. <laughs> I got a woman. Way over town. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I don't know what we talked about today, guys. But yeah. Like, share Right. <laughs> Wait, we were recording this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we're about to start recording now. So. Uh, <laughs> no, that's it, man. That's it. Okay. Finish it, Ray Charles. <laughs> yeah, take us out. I don't know if I got more Ray. I mean, he gives me money <laughs> when I'm in need. Mr. Kevin, Mr. Kevin, please. Like, that's what I think we're doing right now. <laughs>